Hello, this recording is about static RAM. There are several memory technologies. In addition to static RAM, there is dynamic RAM, flash memory, magnetic disk, and the static RAM is the fastest, fastest but the most expensive. Static RAM is typically built using 6 to 8 transistors per bit. The cell, each cell that can store one bit is 6 to 8 transistors. Here we have 6 transistors. Uh, it is fast but not dense. We'll see later that the DRAM is made using only one transistor. Uh, and often uh, it has a standard by mode where we where it retains content but it consumes less electrical power uh, the static ram or the cell has q and q bar it holds one bit in its normal and complement forms uh, we use the BL and BL complement to read and write from the cell and the WL is the select line in which we select the cell for reading or writing. So these are used to, uh, when they are open, we can read or write into the cell. This is an example of a static RAM chip. This chip has 14 uh, address lines so it can store 2 to the power 14 which is 2 to the power 4 multiplied by 2 to the power 10 which is 16 K locations. Now each location is one bit. There is data in line and data out line. So this chip is uh, 16 K bits. In order to select whether we want to read or write into this chip, the write enable line is used. When it is low, we write data in and when it's high, we read. In both cases, the chip select line must be uh, active, must be active low. The two lines ground and VCC are used to give electrical power to this chip. Now, I'll show to you uh, a short video from Microchip about static RAMs titled What is a Static RAM? Hello and welcome to Microchip's Memory Technology Series. So what is an SRAM? SRAM stands for Static Random Access Memory. The first SRAM integrated circuit was sold around 1970, about 50 years ago. That means they were introduced within a decade of the very first planar transistors and integrated circuits. And this is what a common SRAM cell still looks like today. Six transistors make up one bit. And these bits are packed together in a row and column array to make up bytes and words of memory as you need. These two inverters feed back on each other. Let's say you write A3 hex into this byte of memory. The address bytes you sent to the memory are decoded so that the word line turns on these two transistors simultaneously. Then these bit lines, true and complement, are driven with your A3 value. The drive strength is set so that the weaker inverters inside the memory cell change to keep your new value. The word line is then turned off and your A3 hex value is saved. When you want to read your A3 value, the address bytes are again decoded to enable this word line, but this time nothing outside the cell is driving these bit lines. So the inverters drive their saved A3 hex content back to your external world. 
Now you write to eHex, and again, the stronger bitline drivers flip the SRAM bits, changing the content from A3 hex to 2E hex. These two feedback converters now capture and hold your new 2E hex value. In SRAMs, these bits can be read over and over or written over and over infinitely without damage to the structure and without losing content. And an SRAM is symmetrical. Reading your A3 hex and then writing your new 2E hex take the same amount of time. You'll see that in the datasheet. But if the IC power is cut or a brownout occurs, the loop's content would change and the content data is lost. Until about 25 years ago, SRAMs only existed as standalone integrated circuits and every system needed them. It was one of the biggest IC markets on the planet at that time. It talked to the microcontroller or microprocessor package to package. But over the last two decades, as processes have gotten smaller and one IC can hold more and more transistors, every microcontroller has pulled most, if not all, of its needed SRAM memory blocks inside. Anymore, the only time designers buy external SRAM ICs is if they need more SRAM than the microcontroller they select can hold, or it's a cheaper system cost to have it outside for some odd reason, or if their application needs non-volatile SRAM. In that case, they'll put the SRAM outside, so a coin cell battery can preserve the data when power goes away and the microcontroller can be completely shut down. So, though a smaller revenue market than in its heyday, there are still SRAM ICs. For the surviving standalone SRAM integrated circuits, the differences come primarily in the interfaces. Parallel synchronous SRAM focuses on blazing speed. They are pipelined with edge clocks on the inputs and outputs to the IC. Speed is measured in gigabits per second. These are quite expensive and targeted at specialty applications like internet packet routing. Next is parallel asynchronous ICs. These have access times like 25 nanoseconds to 45 nanoseconds. That is pretty slow, but designers value low current here. Low active current, standby current, low sleep current. Why? Because these low currents make asynchronous SRAMs live longer on battery charges. See our video, What is BB SRAM? to understand what battery-backed SRAMs are all about. The last category is serial SRAM with a SPI interface or a quad SPI interface. A serial interface means about 20 to 30 fewer pins. So these designers use low pin count microcontrollers that don't have 20 or 30 extra pins for an SRAM, but they still need just a small amount of external SRAM or battery backed SRAM for their target application. Okay, so here is the SRAM wrap up. Value number one, symmetrical read and write. Value number two, infinite, read and write accesses with no structural damage. And value number three, SRAM is still widely available in IC form in various formats, speeds, and packages. Though availability is dropping because so much SRAM is now on the microcontroller. The disadvantage of SRAM is it is non-volatile. Content will be lost on any power loss to the IC. Note that SRAM pricing is here, more expensive than DRAM, but about half price to any of these non-volatile memories up here at the same density. See our other videos to learn more details about various memory technologies, terms, and other memory concepts.